What's up, my cherry bombs? <laughs> On today's video, we're gonna be diving into some of the most asked questions. These are some questions that you guys have been dying to hear from me. These are some questions that you guys asked me personally and I am here to answer them for y'all today. Um, and it's kind of like a life update too because there's some stuff that you guys asked me um, that I don't really talk about. So we're gonna dive into all of that today while I do my makeup. And if that sounds like something that you're definitely interested in, let's go ahead and get right into the video. What's up, Cherry Bomb? So you guys already know that we're gonna get into these questions. So I already did my eyebrows off camera because I don't have time to be doing it on camera. Every single time I do it on camera, it just never looks good. I'm gonna start off with the YouTube Cherry Bombs first. Not a content creator, but I do reviews on products here and there. My question is, do you think companies would send PR to someone like myself that's not a content creator, but would give a real and honest review? Yes, girl. Companies will send it to you. You do not have to be a huge content creator for people that's beginning I would say sign up with influencer because influencer or influencer is an app and you sign up you put in all your credentials and everything like that and you do reviews like that and then they will send you emails and send out products for free some people don't even post content online and they get free products from influencers so I will definitely tell you yes um, you can do that if you are an influencer you just have to know the right places to do it so if you sign up for influencer I'll put information down in the description box below for you go ahead and do that and you can do reviews without physically having to post now some yes they do ask for posting but before they even send it to you they're gonna ask you if you're comfortable posting so I hope that answered your question girl what things do you feel content creators should keep private to protect their peace of mind okay so <laughs> for example I do not mind if people talk crap about my husband because I know who my husband is and I know how he is and I know the stuff are not true so that's not gonna phase me so that's why I do not mind posting my husband in my vlogs okay or in my stories or whatever have you but for example if you're sensitive of that girl then don't get on here posting your husband if you're sensitive if you don't have a thick skin do not post anything that will hurt your feelings if somebody's talk crap about it that's literally the advice i would have for a content creator so the next question is when you're sent pr are you able to give an unbiased opinion or do other brands require you to say something positive if they do but you're not filling the product what do you do so brands do not require you to be nice about their products especially if it's pr now if it's a sponsored content obviously they're paying you so don't just sit there and bash the product if you don't like it there's a way to say it without liking it but no pr is just PR, it's just a gift. So you don't have to like the PR at, at all. Um, so yeah, but you won't find a brand that's telling you, oh, I'm about to send you free product. You better not talk crap about it. No, they're not. And um, I feel like that's why most brands come back and work with me um, and they respect me because if I don't like the product, I'll be like, this eyeshadow from Makeup by Mario is beautiful. I think it's pigmented, but it's not pigmented enough for me. That's me telling you guys it's not my favorite palette without bashing Makeup by Mario because you just never know. There's probably a product that he makes later on in the road that's going to be your favorite because you bash the brand. You might not want to share it in it anymore. You might not feel comfortable sharing it anymore. I wouldn't bash it like that. It's a way you say it. The brands are going to keep on sending you stuff if you're very honest, but in a good way. Like there's a way to say things. What are some things that keep you motivated to continue creating content? The way I was raised, honestly. I was not raised ideally. Like most people, you know, there was days where we didn't have food on the plate. And it's not, it wasn't my parents' fault. It was just like life, you know. But that's what motivates me. Because I would love to retire my mom one day. I would love, you know, to have my kids in private schools for them to eat exclusive foods. Like, you know, very healthy foods. So if I want that lifestyle, I gotta work for it. That's what keeps me motivated. And until that goal is reached, I'm not gonna stop. What are some things that you wish you knew before starting in content creation? <laughs> was how hard it is. Okay, like I did not know how hard it was, but because I loved it before even starting, I loved anything that had to do with cameras. And that kind of goes back to motivation because if I didn't have the motivation, I don't think I would continue because it is very hard. 
It is worse than a nine to five job. Yes, you have freedom, but there's a lot of discipline that has to go into it. That's why a lot of content creators are not consistent because it's a lot. You don't have to answer to nobody, but then you have to answer to yourself. You have to show up for yourself. So I think that's the most complicated part of content creating, actually being consistent. And obviously it may look like I got that down pat, but some days I just don't want to get up. But because I already set that standard for myself, why the heck would I break? It? That's one thing I would say that's extremely hard. Of course there's others, but if y'all would like to see a specific video of my content creating journey and what keep me motivated, not only my past, but you guys also. If y'all would like to see that, comment down below and I'll definitely get that video ready for y'all. What are some of the biggest hurdles you've overcame throughout your creative journey? I would say posting when you feel like no one's watching your, you know, like for example, TikTok. I was growing really well on TikTok and then I dropped a video that hit 1 million views in less than 15 hours after that, ever since then, my videos have not been doing good. I'm talking about 100 views a day versus 20,000 views a day. Like that's where I was coming from. So it's it hurt my ego because I really thought I had it, but it had a really good way of humbling me. And honestly, getting over that was really hard. But you know what made me get, get over it was like, why am I focused on my TikTok when my Instagram is doing amazing? Why am I focused on my TikTok when my YouTube is actually starting to slowly take off. So I realized that I was wasting so much energy on what was not working and um, was not focusing on what was, was working. So that was the hardest hurdle to go um, to come across. But when I realized that I need to be grateful for the ones that's actually working, it's at the point where I don't even care if it changes or not because I'm so content and happy with how my YouTube and my Instagram is going. So I feel like that was one of the um, hurdles. The next question is, hey, Abby, what are some things that you enjoy outside of creating content? I love singing, you guys. I sing in a gospel band. Realize that I enjoy working out, you guys. So new to it, y'all. Enjoy watching movies with my husband. I enjoy eating, going out to the movies. I enjoy going out with my friends, just sitting at home and doing nothing. But that's very rare in my book because I work from home. So if I'm sitting here, I'm gonna nine times out of 10 be working. I love arcades. When me and my husband first started dating, we used to go to arcades so, so, so much. Um, I really enjoy arcades, content creating is basically my whole life outside of music. I really enjoy music. That's how I met my husband. So yeah, hopefully I can start doing other stuff. Like as far as when it comes to working out, I can enjoy like Pilates and stuff like that. Hopefully I can add that, but I heard Pilates is so hard. What is your ideal location to live long-term? Florida? I don't know, even though it's not a content creating um, states, I really enjoy living here. You guys, there's so much to do, but like if I can choose, I would live in Miami for at least one year in a sky high or a sky rise apartment or a condo or a penthouse with my husband and we just eat out every day, okay? That's like my ideal thing. I have my mirror here, so just in case you guys see me going in and out, but um, that's my ideal place. But outside of that, um, after the year, I would love to buy a house in this area called um, Winter Park, Florida, or in Wintermere. Um, not too much Wintermere because it's right by Disney and I feel like traffic and stuff like that would be crazy. But I would love to live in like Winter Garden or Winter Park, Florida. So yeah, Florida is my ideal place. I don't see me moving anywhere else. What does your content creation schedule look like on a weekly basis? Also, what is the worst and the best part of being a full-time content creator? Love, love, love that question. My schedule kinda looks like this. I wake up, I create content, go to sleep. Poor child, somebody was at the door, but anywho, um, that was UPS. UPS knows my address by heart now because being part of the Sephora squad, the PR goes crazy. But yeah, um, I don't have a schedule yet. I just create content. The only thing that I do have a schedule for is my posting days. So I need to post every Tuesday and Friday, but like, I don't really have a schedule. I just need it. I just know that I need to record my videos before Monday or before Tuesday. So that way I can edit it on Monday, drop it on Tuesday, and then before Wednesday or on Wednesday, so I can drop it on Friday. I would love my ideal schedule to be waking up at five o'clock in the morning every day, um, filming and be done filming by 1 p.m. and doing all my content by 1 p.m. And as far as the best thing about content creating, 
is the fact that you are your own boss um, when you're a full-time content creator. But then at the same time, you have to have some type of discipline because this month you can make, this is not what I'm making, but I'm just giving you an example of what I've heard from other content creators. Um, for, for example, I know some content creators that be making 30,000 in, in one month and then next month they make 3,000. So there comes a lot of discipline and a lot of um, self-control. So obviously you're gonna see 20,000 or 30,000 deposit in your account, what you're gonna do naturally. Probably go to Louis Vuitton and buy you like three, four bags, go on trips, go on a shopping spree. But then next month, you know, you only make 3,000. You know, like, so your bills are like $5,000 for the month though. So what are you gonna do? You know, you, there's there's um discipline. That's the only thing, if nothing's really consistent, that's the only thing that I feel like is the worst part about it. But once you get that in a balance, you'll be good because me, if I get, for example, and I'm not telling y'all what I get, but let's say if I get $1,000 today, um, I'm gonna make that $1,000 stretch till next month at the same date. So that way, you know, I don't depend on just paycheck by paycheck. Cause the reason why I started this is to not live paycheck by paycheck. I feel like that's probably like the worst part about it. The best part, baby, I don't know if I said it already, but I'm gonna say it again, is not having to answer to nobody. It's always being there when there's events. Like if, for example, if you have kids, you make your own schedule. And with me having management now, they just made my life so much easier when it comes to like doing the pitches and stuff like that. And I haven't had management for that long. So think about it, y'all. I was content creating and I was doing the business side of everything at the same time time so it's not easy but i feel like once you get a hang of it you will be able to do it so i hope that answered the question hi abby thanks for your content it's so refreshing and very helpful for perfume lovers like me thank you so much my question is when and why did you decide to do content creation full time i would like to start the content creation road too but i'm scared girl pick up that camera and start like yesterday okay when did I decide to become a content creator? I decided to become a content creator when I realized that I was helping elevate everybody else around me except for myself. Like I was pouring into everybody else except for myself, which made no sense to me whatsoever. Like I felt like it made no sense to me. I felt like um, I was sitting here, you know, just looking at day by day, watching all my friends graduate, watching all my friends get married. And I was already in a relationship, so I didn't care about the married thing, but I felt like everybody had their um, their careers lined up and I felt like I did not know what I wanted to do. And obviously, of course, my upbringing didn't give me the opportunity to just go off to college. It was either, you know, you work for what you have, um, you work to eat or, you know, you don't eat and go to school or whatever. That was like my situation at the time. So when I was, I felt stuck and I felt like I had to do something. And, um, I know that I like, con I, I knew that I liked cameras and stuff like that. I like the camera gear and stuff like that. But then I was like, let me just go on YouTube. And now this idea came up in 2018 and I told my friend and I was like, girl, I'm going to do YouTube, but I don't know what I'm going to do. She was like, yeah, what would you do on YouTube? Like, cause at that time my makeup was not all that. I was not really too good on makeup. I was a shy person. I don't like to, I'm still shy and I didn't like to talk. So most people, when I told them I was going to start YouTube, they were like, what, what, what were you going to do on YouTube? Because the, your personality is definitely like up there, but you're very shy. So I, that stopped me from start starting, not my friends stopping me, but me stopping myself because I was very extremely shy. But I had to realize I, when I got tired of, you know, just watching everybody's life going well, and I know you're not supposed to compare yourself, but when you're in a, in a rut and when you're stuck and you see that your life is passing you by, you start comparing. So I started to compare and I was like telling my husband, let's get on YouTube. So we got on YouTube. It was supposed to be a couple's channel. And I realized after the first video and after learning how to edit the first video, I got such of a rush and a high from that, that I did not want to stop recording. I realized that I wanted to continue recording every day, every second. Like I was done recording and I was ready for the next video. That's how I seen it. 
And ever since then, that's where it started. Going full time, that was the goal. But I honestly did not choose the day for me to go full time. God chose that. Because if it was up to me, I would have never been full time. And let me tell y'all why. I became full time in March 2020. Too. And I didn't announce that I was full time because I was shocked. I had a job for a year working from home. I was working at a bank um, and I was on their credit card um, department for the Apple card. And I loved my job. I was very comfortable. I was one of the high, you know, I was one of the girls that was doing the damn thing. Okay. That means my scores was good and I was good. And then I wanted to be full time so bad. But I just was like, I'm not going to do this because we're in a pandemic. I don't know how long this pandemic is going to last. It's, it's been two, almost two years at this point. And I still don't know like how it's going. There's a new strand every other month. So, but I was praying out to God. I was like, God, I want to be full-time so bad. I want to be full-time. So God was like, okay, well, be full-time. Go ahead and be full-time. And I was just scared. I was so scared. So one day. March 2022, my team lead called me and was like, Abigail, I'm, I regret to inform you, but we have to fire you. I called my friend Claudia. I called my friend Sterling first. Then I called my friend Claudia because Sterling is my bestie. Y'all don't see her because she lives very far, but she is my bestie. We do talk on a regular. So I called her and I was bawling, bawling, crying. I was like, girl, I just got fired. Oh my God, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what we're going to do. Because, you know, things were starting to go get expensive. And I just didn't know what to do, you guys. I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I was crying. And my check was... Va va me and my husband, we don't, we don't separate nothing. We are married. We are one. So our checks and our money is one. It don't matter who's making more. We are one. So my check was a big part of our bills, just like his was. So if his was gone, it would be a huge hit. So imagine mine's being gone. Girl, when I tell you I was crying, my friend was like, girl, just do this full-time thing. Do, do it. Just do it. Just do it. And I was just like, I was like, damn, everybody's telling me to do it. Same thing for Claudia. Claudia was saying the same thing. Sterling was saying the same thing. They were like, girl, this sports, you love content creating and you're really getting good at it. And at the time, they thought that I was really, really good, but I just felt like there was so much to learn. And obviously, if you knew me from 2022 and looking at my content from 2023, you'll see it's two different content because obviously every video I drop, I want it to look better than the next one. That is literally what it is. I see a flaw in every freaking video. There's not one video that I'm happy with. And, um, and that's why I feel like my content quality is really up there because I'm just not satisfied with none of it. I'm never satisfied. So I just keep pushing to get more. So um, Claudia and Sterling was like, girl, you got this. You're really good at it. And I was so scared. I ain't telling nobody. I ain't telling my mom just found out that I'm a full-time content creator in the beginning of this year. <laughs> and it's been a year and some change. So... Um, I got fired and I got fired and I was the best at the job. Like I was one of the best. Like, I don't know why I got fired, but I guess that was God's plan. Okay, y'all. So I didn't realize that my camera went out. Obviously my face is beat, but, um, some of the questions are repeats. I am so sorry. I don't even know where I stopped, but I'm going to just continue where I was going and then go back. But, um, so someone said, what is next for you right now? I'm not sure. I'm just going on with the wind, but I just want to, um, honestly, I just want to work on a lot of campaigns and bring my money up to the point that, you know, I'm declining campaigns. That's my goals. After that, I don't know what's next after that. Walking blindly and just waiting for what God has in store for me. Someone said, what is your favorite time of the day? My favorite time of the day is the nighttime. But lately I've really been enjoying the daytime, but it is the nighttime. Okay, I would love to hear your group's music. Sure, let me go ahead and put a clip right here for you.
The next person said, how have you been feeling with all the great things happening? I've been feeling so, I'm not going to say overwhelmed because I don't feel overwhelmed because I feel like I worked for this um, and I'm enjoying it, but I feel so happy. I, I feel so full of joy and I feel like God has finally answered my prayers because I felt like he wasn't listening to me. And, um, and I feel like the moment I started to put him first, everything has been aligning. So honestly, you guys, I was listening to this podcast and someone said, when you go your way and you go God's way, you realize that going God's way, things come faster versus going your way because your way, you will get to it, but you will go through so much obstacles. And she's not saying that you won't go to ob through obstacles with when you're going with God's way because yeah, the, the road is not easy, but you could have avoided half of that going God's way. So, and I'm a living testimony for that. I realized that going God's way sometimes is not sometimes all the time is way better. So the moment I started putting God first, things started to align. The next question is, what are your goals in the upcoming years? I plan on buying a house. I plan on having a kid. I plan on traveling a lot and obviously, you know, opening up a few businesses. I want to be able to go to sleep and still make money, which I kind of am low key but I want to be able to go to sleep and make money and not have it to post for three years and still be making money. That will never happen though, because I love content creating. I love posting my content, but I want to be able to have that option if I needed it. Hopefully I will never need that because girl, I love creating content. How are you feeling mentally? Honestly, mentally, I am doing amazing. If you had asked me that in 2022 in 2021, I would have told you, girl, I am struggling to stay alive because I've been through so much heartbreak in the past three years. I lost my dad. I lost friendships. One of the situations, and I'm not, I don't care. I'm gonna tell y'all straight up. One of them cut me off and told me that I'm dead to them. And I feel like they didn't realize what they said until after they said it. But like my dad was not even buried for a year in someone's wish and death on me. So that really took a huge toll on me. But let's just say that if that did not happen, and I'm, I, I thank God every day because that happened. If that did not happen, I would not take myself serious. I would have not valued my boundaries because I'd had no boundaries. I was a doormat to everyone. If you was in a friendship with me, I was a doormat to you, straight up. It don't matter. Like I felt like I was used by every single person because I know I didn't know how to say no. So yes, I was a doormat. And when that situation happened. Of course it hurt and people laughed at me. People that didn't like that friendship laughed at it. They were really happy that it happened. Um, people are very cruel. So people were very happy that that happened. And the ones that wasn't happy, but they were low key happy. They didn't tell me, but you know, they were happy that that happened. Um, it really hurt my whole soul. Not only that, the situation, but everybody around me was making fun of it. They were happy about it. So I isolated myself from everyone. And obviously I don't trust nobody anymore. Like I don't trust no one. And um, when that happened, I focused on myself and I put myself, I put myself on do not disturb without physically putting myself on do not disturb. When I say that, I mean, I focused on my content. Um, I was <laughs> focusing on my content and focusing on me. And that was literally the best thing that happened to me in my life the best and i cannot thank this person that wished death on me anymore like i cannot thank you i don't know how to thank you because you it was a really bad to thing to say but that's what i needed to hear to take myself serious because i was taking everybody serious i was doing everything for everybody i was in everybody's face i was i really was not valuing my peace at all and I didn't know how to say the yes. I didn't know how to say no. And the moment that happened, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. So obviously I could never talk to that person again because I'm not I'm not gonna talk to someone that's gonna wish death on me for something that I don't even know. Like it was really, I'm still in the dark about this whole situation. I don't know what happened. And everyone that talks to that specific person or those that specific crew, it's always a different story. So like everyone's coming back to me and is like, girl, yeah, I don't know what happened either. Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, I'm like, I don't know why y'all wasting y'all time because I'm over it. I'm done. Do you and your hubby plan on having a family? Girl, you in my business. You in my business. Y'all in my business. It's getting spicy. But no, yeah, like we do plan on um starting a family. Um, I want to have a child before I'm 30, obviously. I am 20 
So, yeah. But if it doesn't happen, I'm really happy the way I am right now, too. So, so the plan is to build a family. How did you and Mark meet? Uh, me and Mark met on Facebook. We've seen, he's seen me in person before several times, but I didn't know. So one day the band needed a singer and he remembers seeing me posting a video of me singing one time. And he invited me to come sing and we was on a friendship level. Mm -hmm few months passed by obviously I joined the band and we started to um, get closer as friends and one day we was in the car we was talking and we he started to flirt just a little bit but he was very nice with it and I noticed it when I got home and then that's when the feeling started to come and ever since then we um, been rocking. He asked me to be his girlfriend exactly a year from the day that we physically met, which was, um, like I said, he's seen me before, but we met like, hello, hi, I'm Abby. Hello, hi, I'm Mark. October 12, which was my dad's birthday, 2013. And fast forward to 2014, he asked me to be his girlfriend and that was it. And um, we've been rocking ever since. What led you to create your channel? I felt stuck in where I was at. I felt like everybody in my age group or even bit older or even younger was progressing in life. And I felt like I wasn't going nowhere. Um, nothing was changing for me. I don't. I didn't feel smart. I know you guys are gonna come in the comments and saying I'm smart. Y'all don't have to comment that because I know I'm very smart. But at the time, I thought that I was stupid. I thought that I was smart. And of course, being the first child in the immigrant household, you are forced to grow up faster than most kids. So I felt like my I had my household problems because my childhood was not all that. Um, so I had my household problems while I was in first, second grade, third grade. So I really couldn't focus on school. So I thought that it was because I was stupid, but Really, I wasn't stupid. I just had too much going on as a child. I had too much stress on me as a child. So I didn't feel smart. And um, well, obviously we know that that's not the case anymore, but at the time I didn't feel smart. So I was like, ah, there's no point of me going back to school. So we started the channel. It was supposed to be a couple's channel, but my husband was like not as motivated as me. The, from the first time I dropped the video, I realized that this was what I wanted to do. And I, before even uploading the video, I was ready to record more and edit more and do more. So my husband took a step back, dropped my first perfume video and it took off. And when I say took off, it went to like 400 views, um, which took off for me at the time. And ever since then, that's where I started um, creating content. And it was the best decision of my life. Hey Abby, as a content creator, do you ever find yourself getting tired of fragrances or feel as if you need a break? I don't ever feel like I need a break because the moment I have or I take a break, I feel like y'all won't support me anymore. Because if I'm not consistently giving you guys content, I feel like y'all will get it from somewhere else. I do get tired of fragrances a lot. And that's why I implemented um, weekly vlogs. And so that it could be a little bit different from you know, fragrances, but I, yeah, I do get tired of it, but I really do enjoy doing it, but I do get tired of it sometimes. The next question says, hi, Abby, when you're filming and reviewing product, how do you remember everything you want to say without sounding like you're reading off a of paper? I write down notes, but I find it difficult to remember everything. Then tried reading it from another source and it totally sounded weird or looked weird. I, I just talk. I don't, I don't write no, nothing down. I don't write notes. I know that sounds bad, but I don't write no notes. I don't write no script or anything. I just talk from the dome. And yeah, I talk about how the fragrance make me feel. I talk about how whatever the product I am using, my experience out of it, like that's what I talk about. What really made you love fragrances enough to pursue a career related to it? Honestly, I didn't start off by saying, hey, I wanna, I like smelling good, so let me go ahead and re review fragrances. No, obviously um, that all started with me starting my content, but from when I was a little girl, my dad always gave me perfume. My mom always gave me my perfume. My mom always smelled good. My dad always smelled good. So they always made sure that we smelled good. And I started to buy Bath & Body Works when I had money. My parents never bought me Bath & Body Works. They always bought me, you know, perfume. Like whether it's like Arabian style perfumes or whether it is Dior, you know, YSL. 
I've been wearing perfume since I was a kid. <laughs> so I've always liked perfume. Let me go ahead and put my hair down. Fresh retwist. I don't know how to act. And that was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed every bit and part of it of me getting ready to create some content while I answer some of you guys' questions. I hope I answered all the questions. If I didn't, go ahead and comment it down below and then we'll continue in the description box below for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until we see each other again, please, please, please stay safe and keep on smelling fragrances. Bye, cherry bombs. <laughs> How you feeling? I ain't feeling